the history of the world backwards. What does it look like? What does it enable us to see? From a distance, we may see the mighty sweeps of population. We gaze in horror in the 1800s upon Navajo, Cherokee, Apache, and Comanche, as together they implement a policy of ethnic cleansing so relentless, so ruthless, that by 1492, there is not one single European living on the North American landmass. Approach a little closer, and we may observe how a man's life changes his character. In the southern cone of Africa, Nelson Mandela enters prison a sweet-natured Spice Girls fan, but emerges from long incarceration a terrorist and revolutionary bent on the armed overthrow of the state. Closer still, and we may even glimpse, now and then, ourselves. Look, look. Before we begin, the one thing you need to remember over the next half hour is that history in reverse is not the same as time going backwards. In fact, in the history of the world backwards, time still flows forward. For example, a baby born in 2007 lives 80 years, dies in 1927. Or an acorn planted in 1727 has grown into a gnarly tree by 1687, from which a branch drops onto the head of the last man in England with the first idea about science causing irreversible brain damage. In caves, the campfire is a memory of television, which has been replaced by a bardic oral tradition, a rich culture of storytelling, folktale and myth. Come, Bard. Tell us tales from ages past which have been handed down from storyteller to storyteller in their original form. And then that one who was in the bill as a gangster. Well, in this show he was a spy. And his girlfriend is that one who went out with him off of Westlife. Anyway, it was so funny, right? Vadimer, my cousin, she hadn't seen the pilot. So when the bald one off of Star Trek walks in, she only thinks she's got the wrong channel, doesn't she? Ha, ha. Anyway, the uncle has said he is not going to the gay marriage. And at first, the one off of the bill is saying, I don't mind. Sod the lot of you, you know. Stop! Tell us another tale. Another tale is how we ended up in the cave. It was always waiting for us, but was there nothing we could have done? Think back. For many, it was the workplace where things first began to go wrong. Yes, that's how it happened. From 2007 and through the 1990s, there is a steady decline in IT jobs. In 1988, the Harrow March leaves London heading for the north of England, looking for work in manufacturing and heavy industry. One of the marchers carries a sign which says, Will Web Design for Food. Other marchers carry signs, more poignant still. As the famished marchers pass the comfortable homes of those with safe jobs in manufacturing, the marchers beg soup or crusts of bread, in return inquiring if the family has any brand managing needs doing around the house. From the 1990s, 1980s, and on through the 70s, there is competition to keep up with the Joneses by having an even bigger computer than your neighbors. Faced with the rapid decline in computer technology, Hollywood executives fear they may have waited too long before greenlighting Matrix 4. Come with me on this little journey 
if you dare. In a moment, you'll be taking a front row seat at the world-famous Wimbledon Grand Slam Tennis Tournament. Hearing the crowds, tasting the strawberries and cream, smelling the chalk dust of disputed line calls as the world's greatest tennis champions slug it out for a fortnight. But is it real? Or could it all be a computer-generated illusion? Don't get too involved in the game. Try to resist its allure. Instead, I invite you to study the pattern of play. Is the sequence of shots truly random? If not, do you dare to imagine the alternative? That it's all just a limited repetition of binary code? A program cycle, mechanically, repeating itself? <laughs> Now, 1,200 years ago, way back in the year 2007, a man called Anthony Blair became this country's prime minister. For the next 10 years, he led one of the great reforming governments, introducing free university education for all, not just the wealthy. From 2007 to 1997, voter turnout rose ever higher and for a very simple one-word reason. Delivery. With no other issue was this more true than with climate change. Thanks to the Labour Party, UK carbon emissions went down year on year. I shall remember this brave reform in government in my prayers at Vespers, for were it not for their reduction of carbon emissions, our beautiful Isle of Lindisfarne might have been lost to the waves. Lindisfarne. This is Middlesbrough. You see, despite these historic advances in the struggle against climate change, humanity still had to brace itself for the release of carbon stored in oceans and forests and soil. Faced with this danger, the Chinese set up blistering pace dismantling one coal-fired power station per week, while in Britain, the forward-looking ruling elite of the 60s and 50s took radical action of their own. In 1960, Queen Elizabeth closed Gatwick Airport. My husband and I have great pleasure in declaring air travel will not be possible. In 1958, Harold Macmillan closed the last section of motorway in Britain, the Preston Bypass section of the M6. Thus, the worst effects of climate change were mitigated. But we have learned now to be custodians of the Earth's resources. Since international trade became impossible 700 years ago, monks of our order have been preserving rare medicinal plants and flowers, the very last varieties in the whole of Europe, which have, by careful tending, survived only here, in this monastic garden. Come, now I will tell you more about the years of climate crisis. Interviewed in 1968, Huey Newton of the Black Panther Party looks back at the roots of the movement in the Los Angeles eco-riots of 1991. Now, there's always been an ecological dimension to the Black Power Movement from time, way back, before the Panthers even. When you go back, L.A. riots in 91, when that white truck driver, Reginald Denny, got beat up on the highway. <laughs> All the news networks ran the footage, but the bourgeois media did not point out the reason for the attack, which was the incident several minutes earlier, wherein benzene particulates from Denny's truck's tailpipe had been detected on the brother's spectrometer, indicating leaded gasoline in violation of the Clean Air Act of 1996. Now, I'm not saying he deserved a whooping. I'm just saying, you drive to our neighborhoods, where you 
better have a blended diesel electric hybrid in that tank. All right? All I'm saying. Thanks to the success of cinema and TV advertising campaigns warning audiences about the uses of profits from bootleg DVDs, funds dry up for Al-Qaeda. In Afghanistan, Taliban school inspectors apply special measures to Taliban madrasas which are deemed to be failing madrasas. The failing schools will see Taliban burn opium and form financial and military alliances with, of all nations, the United States of America. Here, the mullah has come to inspect the fieldwork of Taliban students of a failing madrasa, constructing a cave in the mountains for the nefarious hideaway of a master scoundrel. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? Oh, uh, Oming, sorry, Oming. No, 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 no. This, this, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm just kind of following the rock letting the chisel glide, discovering the latent forms within the cliff face itself. I was kind of following the bumps and the curves and the wavy lines. What? No, no, this! Oh, no. Does this go towards final exam? What? In the history of the world backwards, the year-on-year -year declining availability of oil meant an end to supermarkets the 2,000-mile salad, and petrochemically fertilized mega ranches. In the 1990s and 80s, many young people put the last years of mobile phone technology to good use in sharing information of where fallow fields were to be found. Every decade of the 20th century from the 90s on through to the 70s and 60s sees ever-growing numbers of people at work in the fields but the soil they find themselves tilling is often very poor because there used to be a shell, a multiplex, ASDA or NCP on the site. Compost, dung and horse manure become prized commodities in short supply. Good evening. At six o'clock, here is the news from the BBC. This morning, Chancellor Dennis Healy announced his new budget. With me to discuss its implications is a spokesman from the Heritage Foundation to present the financial markets point of view. And from the other side of the political spectrum, the head of the CBI will present the views of big business. Now, if I can turn to you first of all. Perhaps you'd like to discuss this by yourselves. It's a couple of minutes, so I'm just getting an urgent news flash. Uh, no, we need you to I ask to a question with. first, and we can answer it. Right. The budget. If the apples under yonder tree represent percentage points, go and pick up how many you think interest rates Seven. will... And if I can turn to you now, who do you think the main winners and losers will be economically from today's budget? Well, the good news is this will make commercial chemical compost so cheap, no one will need to use horsemen here anymore. Uh, broadly speaking, a CBI point of view. Oh, well, very much indeed. One thing's for certain, now's a good time to get out of horse manure. It's just not worth the scraping. The budget's done for all that. Get rid of it. People will look back and be unable to believe that this was a prize commodity. That's the budget, then. Now we go over to our foreign correspondent in Hanoi, Vietnam, Lee Han. Thanks, Joe. You join me here where President John F. Kennedy is celebrating his narrow escape from death after conspiracy to assassinate him in Dallas, Texas was foiled at the last minute. Yes, I gather it was a network of ordinary citizens whose tireless work saved the president at the 11th hour. That's right. The repercussions here have been pretty intense. President Kennedy has decided to celebrate his narrow escape by cooking Vietnam. Fallujah style. <laughs> Take a 
technology collapse means that we have uninvented the atom bomb. But we will also lose X-ray and radio by the 1910s. And it is not only technology that is collapsing. We are also irretrievably losing data and technical knowledge. This we first discovered way back in the 1950s when Cambridge geneticists Watson and Crick are still seeking to keep from the world their terrible secret. The secret that every day, every hour, they have forgotten more about the structure of DNA than they will ever know. So I understand you've spent the past five years working on how genetic codes are transmitted through the chromosomes. Oh yes, yes, we've been doing that a lot. <laughs> a lot. Well, I, I'm fairly tuckered out with all the effort from doing all that research into the old, you know, what you said just now. How genetic codes are transmitted through the chromosomes. Yes, yes, the genetic transmitted. Um, um. Are you close to formalizing a theory? Um, yes, very close, so. Not long now, I shouldn't wonder. Not long at all. Well, I must say, this is very exciting world historical mm. news. Tell me, what is the single greatest discovery you have made? Um, well, um... Ooh. <laughs> well, what isn't? <laughs> <laughs> what isn't more like? <laughs> now, is this a model of the double helix strand of DNA? What? A deoxyribonucleic acid. Would you write that down? All right. The way it works is like this. If you were bad in a past life, then two generations later, you might come back again. Only this time, you'd be mental. Really? You said you had discovered the structure through which chromosomes are passed on. Not us, no. But I have a copy of the peer-reviewed paper Look, in it's which... told you once nicely. You claimed to have discovered the chemical structure of DNA. No, if I'd said it, I'd remember it, wouldn't I? So ask another question. Well, ah, you can't go off your script, eh? Didn't teach you to improvise. Got no street smarts. Take away your clipboard, you're nothing. Nothing! You toilet! <laughs> Duchess. Kepler, dear Kepler. Here's a batch of latest antique technology. Junk industrial salvage brought to you in the hopes you can work out and make what's been used for. Ah, now this. <sighs> Hannah, what do you make of that? Any ideas? It's very interesting. It appears to be some sort of lean, mean, fat reducing grilling machine. Ah, most curious. Now, let us deduce function from form. Obviously, this was the electrical conductor. Let us plug it in to a model of the masterboard, such as they would have had at that time. Ah, short cable can't walk very far in either direction, therefore the tongs must have been used for pick up objects local and near at hand. Tell me, is there any chance we can get these things working again? Alas, madam, it is impossible, for there is no electrical energy. Oh, well. I shall bring in more things next week. Galileo, walk with me. I have been up all night reading your hypothesis for the laws of motion of the Zanussi washing machine and spin cycle. I have many questions. Well, it's very interesting. It was considered a cardinal sin to mix coloured cloth with white.
All this useless technology will never work out half of what it's for. No, no, don't you let nothing, nothing stand in your way. I want you to listen, listen to every word I say, every word I say. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. Ain't no stopping us now. We've got that groove. We've got the groove. So that's carrots, leeks, runner beans and kale, if we've got any. Oh, and watercress. Watercress. And how have you been in yourself? I've been quite anxious about all sorts of little things. Well, very anxious, actually. For example, yesterday Shocking. I was in the... Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. But I haven't told you. You get 15 minutes with me on your doorstep. How you use that time is up to you. Psychotherapy or vegetables. I'm more than happy to listen to you for 15 minutes and not do any fruit and veg at all. For me, that's a double bubble, because at the end of the session I've still got a cartload of veg. I'm sorry. No, don't apologise. I'm just restating the terms of the deal. There's no need to apologise. Is that something I do too often? Ah. Technology collapse has led to ageism, a resentment of old people. Dr. Freud has observed that nowadays many fear the older people because they come from a technologically superior time. One of his patients, a young man called Antoine, is being driven to nervous exhaustion by his elderly landlord and landlady, the Lavenders. The Lavenders are kind, dear, innocent people who just sound sinister. Would you like a hot drink? Oh, yes please, Mr Lavender. A cup of tea would be lovely. Thank you. Yes, a nice hot cup of tea. What could be more harmless than that? Mr Lavender, I'm sorry. I think you've actually got the wrong tin there. I, I think that's actually weed killer. How very clumsy of me. I wish I had a young man's eyes. An age of reason will come after the high water mark of the hydrocarbon age. As superstition recedes, homeowners no longer put their faith in talk radio shock jocks to protect them from the effects of climate chaos, but instead, a period of rational town planning follows. Based on the science of hydrology and a belief in predictable consequences, we no longer build our homes on floodplains. But though the hydrocarbon age was short, its effects will be felt long after its players have left the stage. In the Mato Grosso region of Brazil, the mop-topped Bororo and Cayapo people claim descent from Beatles tribute bands whose plane crash-landed in the rainforest on its way to a Beatles convention. I'm just trying to imagine possessions. A chair would be nice. Imagine a wardrobe. You could put your shirts in it. If we had a shirt. Had shirts, we could put them in the wardrobe. Or drape them on the back of the chair. If we had a chair. I'm just saying. I know I heard you. Well, if we had a wardrobe and a chair, then we'd have a choice of where to put the shirts. And I used to have a choice. I used to have a chair. Or a wardrobe. Or a shirt. Two Ringos and no shirt. Hello. Hello. The other five poles are out hunting. If we had a boat, we could go down the river. If we had some oars. Or a boat. Or a river. Tadpoles, when they get leggy, leave the pond and start to crawl. Can't go on the same way anymore. Olympic bid committee Miss Afghanistan
stand Like Ceausescu and his barbecue Ice Age dinosaurs Can't keep doing what we've been doing no more Can't go on the same way In the future Sci-fi said in the past Next time on the History of the World Backwards, we will find a peace-loving human race unable to resist the slow slide into world war in 1945, when last-ditch talks are scuppered by President Roosevelt's love of the dressing-up box. I am Dracul. This Roosevelt I know not. I am Dracul. In the post-war landscape, women will campaign to stop at home and not have to go to work. Emmeline Pankhurst will call a press conference by some railings to demonstrate female ineptitude. Watch me try to padlock my bicycle. Oh, I'm such a useless ninny. And we shall witness Alexander Graham Bell make the world's last ever premium rate phone call. You'll push the crotch of your panties where? And Rob's back next Tuesday at 10 with more Backwards History. Next tonight, we're going back to Storyville.